Childer! What is this? This is the Pilotfly Traveler Gimbal. How much does it cost? Approximately $450. Comes with a tripod, international AC adapter, messenger bag, maximum payload of 1.2 kilograms or 2.6 pounds, can be teared down into portable pieces, can be charged in 40 minutes with the AC adapter, you can even charge it with a USB power bank when you're on the go. Slower charge, of course. What cameras will work with this gimbal? Action cameras, smartphones, and small form mirrorless cameras like the Sony A6000 series, Panasonic GX series, and Canon M series, all with small compact primes or zoom lenses. Full list in the description below. Who's this gimbal for? If you're a traveling vlogger, this is by far the best compact setup for you and your travels. If you're a narrative filmmaker, you're going to want to step it up to the Pilotfly Adventure or Warrior series. Done! Roll that intro! What's going on everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker, where the answers comes first, the reasons come last, but we're constantly and always still learning. Today's video is actually being sponsored by Pilotfly. I met them at NAB and they gave me a little traveler gimbal to take home with me so I can bring you guys this review. And I figured what better way to review it than to actually use it for its intended purpose, which is vlogging your travels. Now, a couple things that I wanna go over before we actually get started. Number one, I'm walking with no sort of form to try to mimic the vlogging setup. And to further mimic the vlogging setup, I'm using a, an extremely cheap action camera. And because of that, I have no control of the shutter speed. And because it's sunny outside, the shutter is actually gonna ramp up and everything is going to look more jittery than usual. And because of that, I just need you guys to know that's no fault of the pilot fly at all. That's simply the limitations of the action camera, which again, to further show what you can expect when you're vlogging with an action camera. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's start talking about some basic stuff. So this thing comes in approximately $450 at the time of this recording. You get yourself a messenger bag, you get yourself a world AC adapter so you can charge it anywhere in the world. You get a little tripod base, uh, which is awesome, and I'm currently holding onto that right now. And then you also get a USB cable that plugs into the USB control port on the gimbal, and that's for Sony cameras. And then lastly, you get two different types of base plates for the cage. You get one that's the regular quarter 20 for DSLR cameras and action cameras. And then you get one for smartphones. Now, keep in mind, if you're a nerd like me with an iPhone SE, which is extremely small, the clamp is not small enough to actually clamp onto it. You're gonna want to have a bigger smartphone or put the small smartphone into a case, all right? So with all that out of the way, let's talk about some other specs. This gimbal is rated for a maximum payload of 1.2 kilograms, which is essentially 2.6 pounds. That's extremely important, so keep that on the back burner. The battery life lasts for six to eight hours, which is pretty good. But here's the thing, with the included AC power supply, you can actually charge this gimbal in 40 minutes. 40 minutes full charge. That's extremely awesome, especially if you're traveling. So if you're stopping for coffee and you are getting some lunch, by the time you've finished eating or drinking your coffee, you've probably recharged a good amount of your batteries back. So that's awesome. Now, if you're not next to an AC power at all, no problem. There's a little USB port, charges slower, but you can charge it with a USB power bank if you want to. So that's great that you have two options. Lastly, the gimbal itself has a little LCD screen and that tells you all the modes that you're currently in. But if you go into the menu system, you can actually adjust a couple awesome things. For one, you can actually calibrate the gyro of your motors and the accelerometers of your motors. That's really awesome. And then lastly, you can actually even get down to the motor's response. So you can actually change the speed of its response, the range before it actually activates, what have you. Basically, they've made this gimbal so that you can actually just balance the thing out of the box, set it to whatever camera profile you are currently at. So action camera, iPhone, uh, light, medium, and heavy DSLR mirrorless cameras. They have five profiles that's already included inside. So you just have to set those things up, calibrate, and you're pretty much good to go. There's literally no reason for you to have to bring a camera with you or a smartphone to go into the app to further fine tune the motors. You're good to go right out of the box. That being said, 
uh, the smartphone app is extremely detailed. So you can pretty much dial in the exponential curve of how the motor reacts to your movements. You can change the motor power, you can change a whole lot of things in the smartphone app. So if you're somebody that loves to tinker with the motor settings, then go ahead and go into the smartphone app and do it that way. Okay, here's the major question. Who is this gimbal for exactly? Well, it's pretty much in the name, Traveler. If you travel, vlog, this is the gimbal for you. And the reason I'm saying this is because of a couple things. Number one, it breaks down into extremely small parts. So you really don't have to have a huge backpack to take this thing with you. Just a small backpack or even the included messenger bag is good enough. And the messenger bag has enough room for you to pack your uh, action camera if that's the one you're using. There's plenty of space for that. But here's the next thing. This gimbal is specifically meant for action cameras, smartphones, and lightweight mirrorless DSLR cameras. Similar to the A6000, the Panasonic GX series, and the Canon M series with a pancake prime lens or just a prime lens in general that's you know on the smaller side or if you have a really really tiny compact zoom now you might be saying to yourself wait a minute if that's all it's good for and it costs 450 dollars i might as well just go get the zoom crane that's 400 dollars. i can save 50 bucks and it can handle more weight you're right you're absolutely right however there is one thing you need to consider. If you actually use an action camera or a smartphone on that gimbal that can handle a lot more weight, you're gonna have to jump through a couple of hoops to make it work because those motors are much more powerful and if you put something that's too light, it's going to not understand how to correctly balance it. Whereas this gimbal specifically is perfect for someone that travels that also wants cinematic image. What I mean by that is there's really only two types of camp, three types of cameras that you would travel with to get what you're, um, to get the footage you want. You want the general shot, which is either using an action camera or smartphone, the general walking, talking shot. But then you want to get that cinematic shallow depth of field image that you would get with something like an interchangeable DSLR, like the Sony A6000 series. Those are the two cameras that I would say you need to bring with you for your travels. So you can cover both, um, both situations in terms of what it is you're seeing and what it is you're experiencing in your travels. Now, if you're a person that says, I want to vlog with my Canon 5D Mark III, then you're looking for a completely different gimbal. This is for somebody that wants to get on a plane, minimal setup, go somewhere and is able to get a lot of awesome footage and smooth footage with a gimbal. This is who this gimbal's for. Now, as a narrative filmmaker, I can't say that I would invest in this gimbal specifically, and that's because uh, I use heavier setups. I, I would need to go to the Pilot Flies Adventure or Warrior series for the type of systems that I'm using. However, now that they've supplied me with this Traveler gimbal, I'm kind of sort of thinking, well, maybe this channel could use some more vlogging type videos like this where I'm walking around because I'm having a lot of fun using it. Um, and, the, and the idea that I could have gone to NAB with this thing, and if I ever do get a Sony A6000 camera, then I'm pretty much set to go. I don't need to bring my GH5. I don't need to bring anything. I can literally go in one little backpack and have everything I could possibly need for my travels. Now, that being said, uh, there are a couple things that I will knock against Pilotfly, and really it's only one. Uh, I would have loved to have seen them include a USB port a full-sized one that allows you to charge your phone, your camera, what have you. And the reason I'm saying this is because 
uh, the Mojo Mini Me that I had reviewed a while back. That one does have a USB port, but that one's for smartphones only. So it's not gonna handle a Sony A6000 camera. So I would have loved to see them incorporate a USB port. And that way, no matter if I'm using an action camera, a smartphone, or a Sony A6000, what have you, it's constantly being charged as well through the, through the battery uh, handle. That's pretty much the only thing that I can think of to knock against the Pilotfly. But other than that, I think it's a really, really great uh, traveling, vlogging gimbal. And if you specifically use action cameras, smartphones, and a Sony A6000 series with like a 16 or 20 millimeter prime lens for that system, then look no further. This is probably the gimbal you've been looking for, and it's going to handle a lot of your traveling needs with flying colors. And hey, that's it for this week, everybody. If this video has made all the influence in your purchasing decisions, I would truly appreciate it if you check out my Amazon affiliate links down below. Again, this costs nothing extra to you, just gives me a little compensation so I can continue making videos like this for you. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave it down below. I will get to them as fast as I can. But fair warning, if you ask me what cameras and what lenses are gonna work on this gimbal, I've already said it in the video, so I'm going to essentially ignore those comments because I've literally told you what cameras and what lenses. And if you're gonna ask me about the smartphone app in terms of really tinkering the motors, I'm fully gonna say this right now, I'm not that kind of gimbal user that really dives into the motors. I basically balance everything, see what the standard profile does, and if I have to change the follow rate, I will. And that's basically it. Um, so if you have any in-depth questions, I would probably check out any other YouTubers that might have done a deep dive on the smartphone app, because again, that's just not what I do, and I don't need to dive into the app a whole lot for my cases. So. Anyways, with that, all that out of the way, like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you guys in the next one.